Uh, that's really an opportune um, moment to come over because uh, we're going to talk about a cable and I was going to uh, go into a little bit about selection of currencies and currency pairs and you know as uh, if, if you're day trading uh, forex if you're day trading if you're day trading the indices and you most um, index traders uh, they they kind of know which of the indices they like. They they tend to sort of focus maybe on just the SP or the wire. So they you know they they don't have this um, dilemma of oh my goodness you know what am I going to trade today? Commodity traders are the same. You either do softs or you do the metals or and you know you you take what the chart offers you. Some days uh, are going to be better than others, but you tend to be focused on on one instrument or maybe two, but you really really get to know them. When you come to a market. Market, such as, as forex and uh, with and with stocks you know it's a bit of a smorgasbord and you think oh my goodness you know where do I start well as I said with with forex I'm just going to talk you through what um, what we uh, what we do when it comes to the forex market but I just want to pick up on the um, what David was saying about volatility because these charts are actually on my forex page on Facebook where it's 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 got a more of a narrative towards uh, around it but it's a really really something that happened earlier on uh, in fact I hope I can pick it up on the chart here right yeah here it is now this is the, and it's also stresses the importance of um, using multiple time frames now my time frames tend to be something like a Renko chart which is not a time frame at all but it's a non time based chart the three minute chart and the 10 minute, I also use the hourly chart. And part of the reason I use the hourly chart is because I, when I showed you the levels on the NQ, the levels that I have on the hourly chart, uh, the, the values are for the week. So if you're on an intraday, you're using uh, the, the faster time frames, and I have the intraday levels, when I get a confluence, when I get a, I get two levels, two strong levels appearing on both a faster time frame and a higher time frame, then I know that that is going to be a very strong level. And the hourly chart is the one that uh, I tend to use, and I tend to, uh, I tend to use that a lot. But this morning, um, what happened on the 10-minute chart for cable uh, is basically we have this indicator uh, which is the currency strength indicator and the currency uh, matrix and what it, what I've isolated out here are, are the two uh, the two currencies uh, concerned which are the, um, the 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 dollar obviously and the British pound but if I go to the 10 minute chart hopefully it's still here uh, let's have a look. Let's put some more days in. Hopefully that might might might, might bring it in. Let's bring, let's put 30 days in, and that might bring the actual point. Uh, or I'll have to get the the um, the picture. Where is it? Yeah, bum, bum, bum. it was about no. It was. I was not going to work because there's there's not enough days. Let me see if I can find it in my original. Doo -doo -doo. There we are. Let's have a look. Cable. Mm -hmm. No, it's not going to. It, uh, too much time has has elapsed. Essentially, what it was, there was a, a trading. There was a nice setup that came up on the ten minute chart. It was actually a move away from congestion, and it was about ten thirty this morning. Let's have a look. Where are we? Here it is. Right. Let's. See. It's this piece of price action here which is you know it, forget what's been going on uh, subsequently and this is again typical of a lot of the forex pairs where you may not get a, um, a move coming out of the London session it, perhaps you get congestion then you have a bit of a move more congestion and then some of the action happens in the in the US session and with cable you can have it in both sessions, you can have it in one session, it, which is why it's a really nice pair to trade. But however, what it was this morning on the CSI, there was a cross on the two lines. And because previous to that, the pair was in congestion, as we can see here, it was a range uh, ranging uh, around the volume point of control. But we got to this point here, there was a, an alert came up. I have the alerts on the 10 minute chart and it started on this break higher. Now the volume underneath it, as we can see here, it was, it was rising, it's not massive, but it looked like a, you know, a nice breakaway trade breakaway trading 
you can get fake outs. I've talked about this. I've talked about uh, breakaway trading in the past. One of the advantages of breakaway trading is where your stop loss is very easy to, uh, you know, you know exactly where your stop loss is. It's going to be below. Well, certainly here we have the volume point of control. You would put it somewhere, uh, you know, down here. I looked at the at uh, uh, the levels on the Camarilla and it looked that, that there was, as David said, there was a potential for this trade to move up to, in fact, it was up here, 26.65. There was a level on, on one of my other charts and, you know, it, it looked fine. Then you see that and if you're just using one chart, you think, oh, and suddenly it comes to what appears to be a, you know, a sudden stop and you have a reversal. But if you were using multiple time frames, and this was actually the five minute chart here, what happened was, Let's have a look. Here we are. Just push it back. There we are. This is the same, same time stamp. This was the push away. On the five minute chart, we had a volatility candle. The volatility was actually triggered on the five minute chart. And you know immediately that if, if the volatility is triggered, what is likely to happen? You have this reversal within the spread of, uh, within the, spread of the candle. Now, what it also tells you is because people say to ask us all the time, well, what time frames should I uh, should I trade? Should I trade this time frame? Should I trade that time frame? And there isn't an easy answer to that. And the answer I gave last week was basically you have to trade the time frames that you feel the most comfortable with. You've seen David on the second charts, on the 15 second charts, the 30 second charts. He doesn't have a problem with those. He doesn't have a problem with um, you know such fast time frames with the minute chart. You may have a problem in not a problem. You may feel uncomfortable because you feel the price action is too fast. You can't keep up. You're you know you you it is it's tiring. Let's be honest. You know there's there's a lot going on in these faster time frames. There's you can see there may be a lot of choppiness. There's a lot of wicks to the candles. We can mitigate that slightly by going to something like a Renko chart, which actually smooths the price action uh, a, a little bit. But so that decision has to be yours or you, maybe you, you are pressed for time. So you think, OK, I, I'm going to look at the 30 minutes, the hours or even the dailies. It really doesn't matter. They've all got their advantages and they all have uh, issues that you have to uh, address, not least stop loss, how much money you've got, the size of uh, the size of uh, your, your position sizes, contract sizes, et cetera, et cetera. But to get back to this one here, and the reason I, I like this is because this was triggered on the five minute chart and it was a, the trigger came in as the move was happening in the 10 minute. But in this reversal, off that candle from here to here, what I was trying to say is if you are on yet even faster time frame, that is a tradable opportunity. It all comes down to your time frame. If you're on the second chart, you may be comfortable with that. Other people may not be comfortable. So volatility candles, they give you an awful lot of information as David has explained, but they also highlight potential trading opportunities in other time frames that's what i was going to say and i'll just pass back to david and then we'll come back again and i'll have a look at uh, what cable has been up to and also generally about uh, the british pound and looking at the pound pairs that i've actually got that those are my selected pairs and what they've actually been doing uh, to, in this afternoon session <laughs> 